Welcome back. So recently we were on our honeymoon, came back, and it's midwinter. Thought, ah, shouldn't have to worry about anything. Well, it decided that we were gonna get two inches of rain. So our sump pump kept running, 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 and it blew a fuse. So we came back to some water in the basement. So I decided because I was being cheap, let's go ahead and get a battery backup. So I picked up this watchdog, basement watchdog, big combo. Comes with the main pump, the backup sump pump, because my sump pump's already like 10 years old. Let's just go ahead and replace it. Um, doesn't The only thing this doesn't come with is the battery. So I bought a battery and you also are gonna need to buy the acid for the battery. So let's go ahead, well, let's open this up and uh, see what we got and get it installed. We got everything out of the box now. So. You have your, this is your battery backup system here. This is what's going to monitor your battery, um, let you know when the acid gets low, acid gets low, unless it's a AGM battery, which is like 200 bucks. It's an upgrade and it's maintenance free. But this is what monitors it, charges it, and that. Then you have your dual float controller. So your main primary is going to plug into there and that's going to run. You have two floats on here. So if it gets, if your first float fails, you actually have a second float that'll kick in too. So that's going to give you a double protection. And that's actually on, I believe they said it's on both. So that's actually going to be on both the primary and the backup. Your backup power here is going to also plug into your outlet because you're going to use both of them uh, and that's what's going to plug into your controller is this little power pack. They give you a rubber inch and a half uh, rubber boot here. Uh, I'm going to run actually, I have two inch running out of my house so I bought a two by inch and a half but I'm actually going to uh, I don't like those. I had one blow apart before, so I'm gonna actually glue it. And I got a, you know, just a little bushing, an inch and a half by two bushing. So we'll just use a two inch coupling and uh, that'll slide on there. We'll bush it and go right to two inch and we'll have a solid connection all the way up. I just wanna make a quick point. I did, uh, I did misspeak earlier and I said I had a two inch pipe that is outside. I have two inch outside running to a storm drain it's inch and a half inside, so it's standard pipe. That's what comes on there. So I did misspeak about that earlier in the video. So inch and a half inside, two inch drain tile outside for the store to go to the storm drain. That way it gives you obviously the bigger outside gives you a good uh, gravity pull. So I did mis misspeak about that. So it is inch and a half coming off of the pumps, just so you know. Let's dive into getting uh, the old pump out. So first we'll go ahead and unplug it. And if you don't have one, I highly recommend this is a quiet check valve. So if you get a loud banging every time your sump kicks on and off, highly recommend one. It is super quiet, you don't hear it, and it's just, just a convenience thing. It's nice not to hear it bang every time it goes off. It's the middle of the night, you hear that bang, this will solve that. Another nice part about it, is it is threaded together so because I'm gluing it you can't get it out easily but with this is we'll just go ahead and be able to unscrew that and take everything out As you can tell, check valve works, no water came out. We got the old one out. Let's go ahead and uh, so I'm going to set the new one in, get an idea of what I'm going to need to cut, where I'm going to need to add. I have extra pipe, see if we're going to need to do that. but. Uh, first off, we'll set it in and see where we're at and make adjustments and cut the pipe as we need it. I 
I got the pump sitting in there and I'll show you. I have the backup more towards the middle so it has plenty of room around it. I'm gonna go ahead and dry fit it. The previous fittings that lasted a while are DWV fittings, which is drain, waste, and vent. They're not rated for pressure. So this, as you can tell, has deeper hubs than the other ones. Those are rated for pressure. So I'm gonna cut this out here anyway. I think I'm gonna get lucky where I can fit this onto that pipe and it'll go right onto the pump and therefore less fittings always is better. So let's try that out. I'm gonna use a mini hack, a little mini hacksaw. I call it a mini hack. Uh, you, you know, if you have a cutter, you can, but this way um, it's controlled and I can get it right up against that fitting. Unfortunately, it's a little low, so we'll probably have to put a coupling. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to shorten this up. For time's sake, we're gonna jump in with the salt off. That's the height we need it, so we're gonna have to cut, cut this off a little bit.
I got it all glued in for now, so we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna come back and actually put a piece of wood across um, and so I can hold it. So this is uh, nice and sturdy when we're done. Uh, for now, I just wanted to have the flexibility uh, to move the pipe so I can get everything glued together. I saved you the boring part of filling the uh, battery with the acid. Unless you get, like I said earlier, the maintenance free one. So I went ahead, I got that filled and put in here. So now we're going to finish up the setup. Um, the, put, the glue is drying and uh, I got my board up. I will put a strap there later. Um, but for now, we're going to keep moving forward. So the controller actually will mount to the lid. That's why they give you a hole there. So you're going to feed these leads through here. And then there's, you're just going to pull these Velcro here, mount it right, just stick it right to, right to the lid. Since I'm using a, the watchdog battery, uh, I can use the sensor they provide to let me know that it's low. So, but first we're gonna, they mark it very clearly, positive sticker. So that's gonna go to the positive, then to the negative. We want to use this sensor, so they give you a cap to use that. There's a yellow one that comes with it, so we're going to go ahead and change that. And there's a smaller hole in there, so we'll go ahead and slide that in there. And we can seal this up. And you can see already the water level is okay. Uh, that's giving me a power signal right now and that's because I don't have it plugged in yet. So we're going to go ahead and we'll go keep moving forward on that. So we're going to wire in to get the beep. So this is going to connect to that module and this is what's going to run that secondary pump, the float. It's going to tell, that's going to tell the battery, hey, that sump isn't working, let's kick that battery on. So we'll go ahead and plug that in now. And you gotta provide the backup with some power. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the battery, the power pack plugged in. We got it plugged in the back. So that battery pack goes in the back there. It's showing now. Now we have the power is off. So it's letting you know that there's no more alarm for the power and uh, system is operating and it's charging. So we're good to go for there for now. There's gonna be a lot of cord management when we're done. Now we gotta do the main one. So the float, this is what's wired to the floats that we were talking about, the double float. So this here is kind of the brain to let you know, hey, if the, when it gets high enough to kick on the primary, and if it gets to a certain point, it's gonna kick on the second float in that unit and let it know, hey, we really need to do this. And if it doesn't kick on, that's where this picks up. This hooked up to this here. Kind of confusing, but you need it all plugged in. 
So now we're showing charging and system operating. So it's all good. All of our warnings are cleared. So this one here, this is what goes to the, this is what pushes out the power to the pump. This is the one here that will follow it along here. Goes down to that secondary. So that's the secondary. So if water hits that level, that's going to kick on the bypass or the battery back backup because that means the primary isn't working. So that one here, down there, you can see where that leads right there. That is your float. So there's two floats in there. So when there's one that comes up, and if it doesn't hit, then it's going to go ahead and hit the second one, and that's going to be controlled by this. This is your switch. So when that float hits a certain level, that's what tell you the water's high enough, it's going to kick it on. If it hits that second one, it knows to kick it on also, so that way you have a redundancy on floats, which is nice. This battery pack plugs into the back of this right here. And that's just providing the battery with charging and uh, keeps the battery going, keeps it tendered. So that's it. Before I go ahead and zip tie all these wires and make it look nice, I'm going to go ahead and just try it and make sure everything's good. Just pour some water in there. I unplugged it. So you heard the beep, the pump's running, so it's using the backup now. Just want to make sure that worked before. Uh... It works. A little loud, but that's all right. Went ahead and reset it, so I will keep letting you know that hey, that primary kicked on or didn't kick on, the backup kicked on. Check your primary. So I went ahead, there's a yellow button here, I'll show you uh, that went ahead and let me know that there is a problem with the main pump. So we went ahead and checked it. Basically I had it unplugged, so it didn't have power. I got everything tidied up. Everything's running good. It actually cycled a couple times while I was doing everything. Um, we're getting a thaw now. Uh, we're gonna be ready for the rainy season here. It's just about to be spring. So we'll be ready to go for better or worse. Uh, you know, if we lose power, blow a fuse again. No matter what, we got a battery backup. Hopefully, it will keep us from getting any more water in the basement. Uh, for now, everything looks good. If I ever have a problem with it, I will make a video and let you know what I came up with. But we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, and I uh, will see you again. Thanks.